it surprises me that when I mention to someone the idea of fasting, intermittent fasting, skipping a meal, the look I get of like, are you crazy? But today we're going to talk about why that might be a good thing to do. Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. The reason I make these videos is to help people to understand that your mental health and your physical health come together to create your overall sense of well-being. If you find these videos helpful, please consider subscribing. We've been conditioned to believe that we need to eat every few hours. And, well, part of that is because when we do eat, we get a dopamine hit. And that encourages us to eat because often when we eat, we eat carbs. And that causes us to release dopamine into our brain, which is pleasing. And therefore, we want to do that again and do that again. But the other thing that causes us to eat more often is the food companies figured out that putting sugar in foods makes it more palatable. And so when we eat things that have sugar added to them, they taste better, they feel better, they're, and it's pleasing not to mention that dopamine hit, and so therefore we end up eating more often. I was really surprised to learn that in order to make a good spaghetti sauce, you have to put sugar in it. And when my dad told me that, and because and, he, and that, the reason we had that conversation is because I had made some spaghetti sauce, not putting sugar in it. This is years ago. And it didn't taste right. And I learned that, oh, because I forgot to put the sugar in. That was crazy surprising to me. And yet the food companies have known this for years and they've been doing this for years. Now, of course, sugar also is a preservative, so it keeps the stuff from spoiling. But at the end of the day, it that dopamine hit does happen. Every time we eat, insulin rises. So... Regardless of what we've eaten, there's macronutrients in there, so fat, protein, carbs, that cause our insulin to react in order to process the food. If we were to say zero is not at all reacting and 10 is absolutely reacting, then when we eat fats, our insulin response is about a two. When we eat Protein, our insulin response is like a four or a five, depending on the kind of protein. But when we eat carbs, our insulin response is like a nine or a 10, depending on the kind of carbs. And so it really is important for us to recognize that every time we eat carbs, we're having the maximum reaction that our body can possibly have. It is really difficult to overeat protein, fats, it's even difficult to overeat unprocessed carbs. So let's talk about this. There's an upper limit to how much pork chop I can eat, right? I can eat maybe one, one and a half, and I'm going to be like, oof, too much. There's an upper limit to how much fat I can eat. So that fat that's on the end of my pork chop, right? There's, there's an upper limit to how much of that I can actually ingest. There's an upper limit to how much salad that I can eat. Before I would get to even, like... Uh, near 20 grams of carbs, I wouldn't be able to keep eating the salad or the leafy green vegetables. Why? Because they fill us up. When you're eating whole foods, it's really difficult to overeat them. However, when we eat processed foods, then it becomes really easy. You see, if I eat protein powder, then for sure I can eat much more than 90 grams of protein powder in, in a sitting in I could probably eat double, triple, four times that, right? If you make a shake with protein powder, sure, you could drink that down because before it would even be in your system and if, and you knowing how it's affecting you, you've already swallowed it down. It's the same thing with um, fats. Eating MCT oil in my coffee or whatever, it's easy to overdo those things. And most of us don't do that. Most of us get our protein, most of us. I'm not talking about the bodybuilders now. I'm talking about regular everyday people. <laughs> We get our protein from our meats, we get our fats from our meats, or like nuts and olives and stuff. We get our fats from real foods, from eggs, and these things are really hard to overeat. But the problem is, most of us get our carbs from processed foods, and those are really easy to overeat. The wheat that's in bread has been so ground up to make the bread that when you're eating a slice of bread, you're getting so much more carbs than if you were to eat the grain that went into making, you wouldn't be able to finish it. If you ate the grain that made, went into making that one slice, you wouldn't be able to finish it. And if we don't recognize that piece of information, right? That if you had a piece of sugar cane 
to eat that piece of sugar cane, the time it would take you to chew all of that up and swallow it versus the sugar that came out of that sugar cane, well, you could eat 12, 15, 14 times much more than that. I mean, you could eat a lot more of the sugar than the actual sugar cane. We need to understand that piece of information. When we eat a processed food, we've concentrated what was in nature. And if we ate what was directly what was in nature, we wouldn't be able to eat the amount that we eat when it's processed. Now, here's the problem. Whether it's MCT oil, whether it's protein powder, or whether it's some kind of sugar, if we have extra carbohydrates, proteins, or fats in our body, it will be converted to be stored. And once it's converted and stored, then we're walking around with excess fat on our bodies. And we're railing against this. We don't want that story. And the question is, what do we do to help ourselves to change that situation? I just finished saying that when we eat excess carbs, proteins, or fats, they get stored on our body. And yet, every few hours we eat. We don't need to. We could actually be taking the extra energy that we have on our body and using it to fuel ourselves. But yet we don't. And the question is, why don't we do that? So let's look at some numbers for a second. I'm going to use my to give you these numbers. So if I have about 30 pounds extra on me, that would mean that I have about 105,000 calories on my body. This would come out to 52 or 53 days worth of energy extra that I just have on me that I could use at any point in time. And the question becomes, why aren't I using it? Well, it's because I'm afraid to go a day without eating. I'm afraid to skip a meal. And okay, wait, so but am I aware that I have that much energy on me that I could be using? If you had $105,000 in the bank, would you be afraid to not go to work one day if it was going to help you metabolically? Would you skip a day of work if you knew that that was going to help your, your, your body? I think most people would say yes to that, right? If you had any medical anything's happening and skipping one day, which is a few hundred dollars, would help your physiology and you have $105,000 in the bank, you would do it. And so... Why are we so afraid to miss a meal? Okay, so let's, let's put this in perspective, guys. I think the true problem is that most people don't recognize how skipping that day of work would actually benefit their body, right? So me not eating that one day, how would it actually help me? And if you look at this from a money perspective, if I knew that by not putting that money, so not working today to put money in the bank, if I knew I could take that money now and put it into advertising to help my business to grow, I would do that. Well, then I need to understand what happens if I miss one day of eating? What does it do to help my body to function better? If I understand that, maybe I'd be more willing to invest in not eating that one day. When we don't fuel our body for a few hours or a few days, our body can engage in something called autophagy. Basically, that's cell cleanup. But it, it, it's a process that our body can only do when it's not processing other big things. Because autophagy takes a lot of energy. Processing food takes a lot of energy. So our body has to choose. If we eat, our body will process the food because it's really important for excess carbohydrates not to be in the blood system. And it has to do something with this energy that's coming in. It has to put it away. Whether it's the carbs or proteins, the fat, it has to get put where it needs to be. This is energy intensive. But what happens if we allowed some space? So back up. Imagine for a moment, just to give you a perspective of what that means, because I feel like sometimes we don't really understand why it can't it happen at the same time. So let me put it to you in a perspective. If I arrive home with my children at 6 o'clock p.m. and my kids need to go to bed at 7.30, I have a messy house and I have supper to make. I have to prioritize feeding the kids. By the time I feed them, get them into bed, my night is over, I have to go to bed because I have to wake up the next morning if the house didn't get cleaned. And if you do that every day, five days a week, six days, whatever, if you do that all the time, your house doesn't get cleaned up. But even worse than that, every day, a little more mess and a little more mess and a little more mess is being added to the house. So when we look at our bodies, it's exactly what's happening. On a very daily basis, we eat every few hours. Our body doesn't get the chance to do any cleanup because it's focused on putting the food away, putting the food away. But then what happens on the weekend? Well, most people will notice that on the weekend, their children will get up and they're not super interested in eating because they want to play games and they want to watch cartoons. Which would mean for mom, I have an opportunity on the weekend to do some cleanup. 
but it's not going to be a lot of time. I'm going to have a few hours and then my kid is going to be hungry. And then we're back into that routine of feed the kid, play with the kid, do stuff, right? Get the kids to their sport or whatever. And so for most people, the weekend is pretty busy, but you have that little window in the morning to kind of do a little shuffling around. Well, for us, our body is the same thing. A lot of us on the weekend, will sleep in, maybe our first meal is gonna be around two. And so if I've gone from last night around till this morning, I haven't eaten in a good number of hours, maybe 16. Maybe on some days at work, it might happen that I skip breakfast for whatever reason, and then, oh my goodness, I'm not able to have lunch. And so again, I've gone 16-ish hours or even 20-ish hours without eating before I can eat something. These small opportunities give your body that little bit of time to kind of do cleanup, but it's not enough, right? Your house is still not in order. It's just slightly better than it was before. The big issue that I see here is that we didn't plan it. And my question to you becomes, but what happens if we actually plan it? What happens if I plan to eat at noon or one or two? then we actually have the scenario where my body has the opportunity to do that little bit of cleanup more regularly. And although it might not mean that I eliminate metabolic issues, it could actually mean that I keep my body at stable or solve something. So a little bit of progress being made every few days is better than no progress being made at all. And if I do that daily, that's a little bit of progress being made every day. What I find really cool is that when people allow themselves to do an intermittent fasting, because that's what you'd be falling into at that point, when people allow themselves to do an intermittent fasting regimen, like what I just described, and I kind of ease my way into intermittent fasting, what you recognize is that you're not as hungry as you thought you were going to be. Like missing that breakfast isn't really a big deal. Like I said, a lot of people do it all the time. But even more importantly, missing lunch sometimes isn't a big deal slowly, slowly, you start to recognize that I could feel hungry, but then a few moments later, I don't feel hungry anymore. And the question is, why is that happening? Well, when you don't eat, your body will just take some fat from storage, especially if you're doing keto. If you're living a ketogenic lifestyle, this is going to fall right in for you. And because it takes some fat from you, you don't feel hungry anymore. Now, what does that mean for your body? Well, imagine what would happen if grandma decided to take the kids for the weekend. Well, if the kids are gone for the weekend, wouldn't you have the whole day, two days, to clean up the house and get it like back to what you wanted it to look like and be all happy and relaxed when the kids come home? The same thing can happen with intermittent fasting. See, that little bit of cleanup that you do every morning till lunch, maybe till after lunch, that little bit of cleanup that, cleanup that you do, if you allow yourself to get used to letting the hunger pass, because when we don't eat and then we feel hungry, if we wait a little bit and let our body tap into our own fat, the hunger goes away. And I know that most of you have fallen into that just because you couldn't eat at lunchtime when you wanted to eat. And so therefore you ended up having that situation where the hunger went away and you just kept going, almost like forgetting to eat. But if we plan it that way, it happens too. So if I plan not to eat lunch, I can make it till supper. And I'm not asking you to force yourself. What I'm saying is allow it to happen. Especially it's easy to do on a busy day. While I'm busy, I just drink some water, drink some coffee, something, and allow my body to tap into the onboard fat. How does that help me? Autophagy. My body will have the time to clean itself up. And while it's cleaning itself up and getting itself back in order, cells that shouldn't be there, so cancer cells, deformed cells, old cells can get recycled. And any metabolic situations that are harmful get solved. Our body is the best at cleaning itself up. Rather than looking for external things to solve, for example, insulin resistance, not eating for a few days allows our insulin to recalibrate itself. Not eating for a few days allows our body to tap into onboard fat rather than having to take diet pills or other things. We do things that are harmful to our body rather than allow our body to heal itself. When it comes to fasting, I do encourage you to ease into it because it allows you to know what it feels like to be hungry 
and then have the hunger go away. It allows you to know what it feels like to feel better, even though I haven't taken any medication or right. It allows you to know that your body actually can not eat. It allows you to experience better health without drugs. All of these experiences allows you to learn that our bodies are made to fast occasionally. They're made for that. As a matter of fact, we used to fast a lot more than we were feasting in, in years past. But now we have the opportunity to feast all the time. It's important for us to allow our bodies to fast re regularly. As we allow ourselves to gather information, learn about fasting, and actually see how fasting affects us, we learn to be not only not afraid of fasting, but to encourage fasting and to engage fasting and to be enthusiastic about fasting because fasting is, is a cheap way to improve your health. It doesn't cost money on food. It doesn't cost money on medication and it absolutely does improve your health. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please subscribe and I can't wait to talk to you in the next video.